Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel and as always I've prepared some revision materials for you. Today I'm going to look at a steel beam question uh, designed to BS 5950. Uh, the question is, uh, is asking or the question reads a simply supported beam of span 5 meters carries a reinforced concrete floor capable of providing lateral restraint to the top compression flange. The informal disturbed load is made up of 20 kN imposed load or live load plus 20 kN per meter dead load. Select a suitable UB section in grade S 275 and check it against shear moment capacity and deflection. Take E as 205 kN per millimeter squared and ignore the self of the beam. So this is the diagram. We have a beam of five meter span. There's a, a UDL of 20 kN per meter that is uh, imposed and 20 kN per meter that is dead. So we'll go through the steps of solving um, this problem or this question and we'll go we'll start with the, the first step and that is to determine the design shear forces fv and the bending moment um, m okay sorry so now the design load for you to Get the design load, you have to multiply by the partial factors of safety, the partial factors of safety, and those partial factors of safety for the dead load is 1.4, and for the point load, uh, for the live load, sorry, is 1.6. Uh, that is as, <coughs> as per BS5915. So the dead loads, once you multiply 20 by 1.4, you get 28 kilonewton per meter. And 20 multiplied by 1.6, you get 32 to the newton per meter. In total, if you add these two, you get uh, 60 kilonewton per meter. So now this we'll use this as now the design load. So the next thing you do is now to calculate reaction at A and reaction at B. And um, reaction at A and B is uh, both equal. So you the design load 60 multiplied by 5 to get the total a downward force and you divide that by 2 and you get 150 kilonewton per meter. So get in the moment, the design moment M, and you basically use this formula WL squared over 8 and our W is 60 and our time is 5 meters. So 60 times 5 squared divided by 8 to get uh, 187.5 kilonewton meter. The diagram shows uh, if you sketch the shear force diagram uh, at A, the shear force at A is equal to the reaction at A, and of course the shear force at B is equal to the reaction at B. The maximum bending moment is 187. So we use these values now the maximum shear and the maximum bending for the purposes of des designing. So the next, we go to the next. Yep, and we do what is called the initial selection of the universal beam. So the bending is usually the most critical element you check in a beam. And that's why we use bending to do the, inis the initial selection. So to get to do that, you use something called the beam plastic section modulus. And the SX of the beam will give us a rough idea on of the best beam to select. So the beam section model is given by M divided by PY, where M is the applied moment, PY the steel design strength, and SX, of course, is the beam plastic section modulus. So in our moment was 187.5 kilonewton meter kilonewton meter. So here you have to be very careful with the units because our PY 
is given in Newton. Given in Newton. So we have to convert this to Newton from kilo Newton. And again, the value of um, the section modular in the steel table is given in centimeter cubed. So it, you can either do directly, you convert this moment into centimeter, but it's, it's easier to do the millimeters first. So I've multiplied the 187.5 multiplied by 10 raised to power 3 to convert to newtons, and another 10 raised to power 3 to convert to millimeters. So if you do that, if you divide this by 275, you get 692 times 10 raised to power 3 millimeter to, to the power of 3. Now, the value of the section modulus in uh, the steel tables is not given in millimeters. It's not given in millimeters, it's given in centimeters. So again, you have to convert this to centimeter and you get 682. 682 centimeter. So now we move to the steel tables and we get a value that is higher than this, a value that is higher. Remember, Sx should be greater than M Y. So if you go to the steel table, um, uh, I checked the value that is um, slightly higher is uh, this section of the beam, 385, oh, five, sorry, is 127, is 48, your universal beam. And these are the properties. Uh, if you check here, the sorry, um, uh, sorry for that. Let me uh, that again. So the value of six. Is seven or six, the one I'm pointing here with the uh, mouse. This value here. This value here, which is slightly higher than uh, <clears throat> the, the SX we calculated. So, We are going to dump this beam. Uh, we are going to dump this beam. So five times one twenty seven by forty eight, and we write down the properties. These are the properties that you are going to use in our calculations. The D, that's the depth, the, the breadth, the T, small T, capital T, and all all those all these values. So the next thing we do now to do what's called uh, section classification, section classification. And we use this table here. Well, these tables are provided in the question. So you don't need to cram and try and remember everything, you know. If you check uh, any past paper, this table is usually provided at the back. So don't struggle so much to, to cram this. So, <clears throat> The, there are a couple of things that determine uh, the class of that particular section. And you consider this ratio. This thing that looks like letter E, uh, it's a Greek letter, epsilon. So it's the value of E, or uh, let me call it epsilon, it's the square root of 275 divided by design strength. So our design strength was 275. So it's the square root of 275 divided by 275 is basically 1 because the square root of one is one. So this value will be one. So our ratio of B, B over T for our section was 4.47, which is less than nine. Again, the ratio of D over T here is 27.9, which is less than 80. Therefore, our section now is uh, falls under uh, class one plastic. So our section is class one. So the next thing now we do after classification of the section is to check now the shear, the shear stress, strength, shear strength of the beam. 
the shear force fv should not exceed the shear capacity of the section so the shear capacity of the beam which is denoted by pv is given by 0 0.6 py multiplied by av where av is small t times t so if you patch in the values you get that our, <coughs> our design strength is 0.6 times 275 times our small t is 8.9 uh, times our d is 310.4 if you get do that you get 455 822 newtons this is newtons so if you convert to kilonewton it's 455.8 Newton. Now, <clears throat> if you do a uh, sixty percent of this shear capacity, you will get it is seventy-three kilonewton. Sixty percent of our shear capacity, and our shear force or FV is less than sixty percent of the shear capacity hence, hence this load is a low shear load it's, this is a low shear load having said that uh, the beam we see that the beam is already adequate in shear because the shear the apply the shear force is less than the shear capacity of the beam hence the beam is adequate in shear so the next thing now we do is to check bending capacity it's to check bending so to avoid bending fail it is necessary to ensure um, that the design moment m doesn't exceed the moment capacity section or m is less than mc so mc is, is py the design strength multiplied by s where S is the plastic section modulus. So from the table, we the, the steel table we provided, our SX is 706 multiplied by 275. And <clears throat> you get 194. So I'm div I've divided by a thousand to convert to remember the, the value of SC here, S given in centimeter cubed it's given in centimeter cubed so i've divided by a thousand to convert it to to meter cubed all right so if you do that uh 275 275 multiplied by 706 you get it is 194 150. So if you divide that by a thousand, you get it. It's 194.15 um, kilonewton meter. Remember, this 275 is already in newton meter. So our bending um, was 187.5. So 185.15 is already greater than 187. So the beam is already adequate in bending. There is also an additional check that is provided under BS 5915. And it says to avoid irreversible damage under the service stability loads, MC is limited to 1.2. Y ZX, where ZX is the last modulus section. So ZX for this beam was 612. So if you still calculate that, you get that it is 201.96, which is much greater than our moment capacity. Hence the beam is adequate in bending. The beam is adequate in bending last but not least you we, we, we check the uh, uh, deflection we do the deflection check for this these are the deflection limits for cantilever beams 
the deflection limit is length divided by 180 for beam carrying plaster or other brittle finish. Um, that is span divided by 360 or other beams is except pilings and sheet railing span over 200. For, for this question, we are not given the dis deflection limit. But I've chosen the last, this whole last one, span over 200 as uh, my deflection limit. Now let's calculate the deflection. In calculating deflection, we use unfactored impost load only, unfactored impost load only. And this beam has only UDL, there's no point load. We're going to use this formula. Deflection is 5W raised to 4 divided by 384 EI. Our E, our E is 205. Oh, I find it easier to work with meters than with millimeters to avoid um, working with very huge numbers. So what I've done in this question, so you, it's good you pay attention here. Uh, I've used meters, everything in Newton and meters. So my E value, remember our E was 5 kilonewton per millimeter squared. So what I've done, I've converted it to the Newton uh, meter squared. That's why I've, I've multiplied here by 10 raised to power 6. All right. Yeah. I've multiplied this by 10 raised to power 6 to convert it to the Newton meter squared. Similarly, this I from the steel table is given in centimeter raised to power 4. So to convert to meters, to power 4, I'll divide by 10 raised to power negative 8. Remember, 100 centimeter make up a meter. So if you're raising that to power 4, it's 10 raised to power negative 2 times 4. So you get 10 raised to power negative 8 to convert, to convert centimeter to power 4. You are converting to, to meter. So you are multiplying by 10 raised to negative 8. So don't forget that. So now if I punch in the numbers, remember this is in kilonewton. This is in kilonewton. This is in kilonewton. Similarly, the value E here is also in kilonewton and all the rest are in meters. So if you get the numbers there, you get 0 0.08357 meters. Meters, so now I have to convert to millimeters, so you multiply it by 1,000, and you get 8.357, 8.357 millimeters. The deflection check is span over 200, so our deflection limit rather is 25 millimeters. And uh, this value is significantly lower than 25. So the beam is adequate in deflection. So don't forget to like this video, share, and uh, you can support me. My MPSA number is 0704. Two one eight four nine four seven zero four eighteen four nine four. Hey, Mazi, at a rush at a ten bob, a twenty bob, and a nipples are the bundles. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, share, and of course, subscribe if you haven't. That marks the end of this video.